What's going on guys? It's Thanksgiving day here in Canada, so I'm sure by the time this gets released, it won't be Thanksgiving, but for all you guys who in Canada celebrating Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to you. I did not have a crazy meal yet. I may have one post-workout and wait for Dennis to get back to me, uh, but it is still a work day. So we're in here, we're gonna do some chest, uh, possibly some triceps afterwards. A lot of you guys on Instagram have been following along. You know I'm kind of doing a transformation. I'm down to 260 now. Uh, the weight's coming off pretty fast. Uh, I never really had trouble dropping fat, so my body weight's starting to move now. I'm down to 260. Uh, hopefully we'll get to around 240 when I'm done. And that should be good enough for photo shoots, video. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing. Now, a lot of people have been asking, am I gonna get on stage again? The, none of this is for the stage. Now, if by chance, I get to 240 and I look like I could step on stage and be respectable, um, then I may do it, but none of this is really for the stage, just for the transformation. I'm a bodybuilder through and through and I love doing this, so this is what we do. Now, before we get started, I already had my hostility uh, on the way in, because I have it at home. And usually when I get here to the gym, I uh, mix up my intra workout. So I always have on the spare, on, on some days I have bloodshot, but most days when I train, I have hostility. That's our all-in-one pre-workout, and it's a real all-in-one, not just called an all-in-one. It has everything in, everything a pre-workout should have in it in all categories. And when you look at a pre-workout, look at energy, focus, um, strength, endurance, pump, all those things you want to check off all those boxes for it to be an all-in-one, and that's what hostility is. Now... When I get here, I go with the Intra R3. Intra R3 is our intra training product, so during your training. And it's not just carbs and it's not just EAA. We also have Pico2 in here, which is gonna help with your endurance. And that to me is probably my favorite ingredient that we've added to any of our products. Now the Pico2 is gonna allow me to train just as hard at the end of my workout as I did at the beginning of my workout. And that's really the benefit to it. And that's the benefit to having an intra workout. You don't get that fade during your workout. It kind of keeps you fueled all the way through. And then we do have EAAs. We have a good eight, eight gram scoop for muscle sparing and muscle recovery purposes. And then we have a little bit of carbs, just 20 grams, just so you don't fade. Sometimes people get a little bit hypo or something during their training, kind of ruins their pump. They can't get a pump when they're training because maybe the, car the food they ate beforehand digested too quickly. So we have a little bit of carbs in our intro. That way it keeps our body fueled with a little bit of glycogen. And that way it keeps our pumps high and uh, keeps our workout strong. So that being said, we're fueled up, ready to go. So let's get into it. Something I've mentioned in other chest workouts. I'm sure there's probably new people that are on the channel, so just gonna mention it again. When you're doing an incline press, whether it be dumbbell or barbell, the incline does not have to be that high. Sometimes I see people sit down to do an incline press and they'll put the bench, you know, somewhere like that. This isn't wrong, okay? It's just, I don't think it's optimal for building the most chest. I feel like you only need a slight incline. And this is something I learned from John. Well, I learned almost everything from John, but one of the things I learned from John was a low incline is good enough to hit your upper chest. Now, if you really have upper chest issues and it's a lagging area, then yes, I would put it higher because then you're gonna get right across the top and across the front delt. But when you get too high, you are gonna get more front delt. So I would be careful going too high with the incline. As you can see, my incline is just one notch up on the bench. You probably do two max. 
confessions over these 808. Don't no sleep on the key, better stay away. I mean, for heaven's sake. I'ma be the best. Came from the endless. Playing with the games, bitch with the chest. Be beating on my chest, trying to get my rest. Watch me while I flex. Every win is a blessing, and every L is a lesson. So when I run into rejection, I know it's only redirection. I see the blessings right beside me. The chances are quite unlikely. I do it like I'm in my Nikes. Don't make excuses, they never excite me. Boxes, boxes. I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted. This passion is never exhausted. And you cannot stop it. Nah, you cannot stop it. Quitting was never an option. So much he's showing me, shaping me, growing me, taking me so and sees a growing tree. Y'all get a load of me. Yeah, don't let them slow on me. I get the bad like a grocery. I'm on my ground like I'm supposed to be. And I do not care if you notice me. Boxes, boxes. I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted. This passion is never exhausted. And you cannot stop it. Nah, you cannot stop it. This isn't a robbery. Hands in the sky if you got a dream. Learn nothing was blocking me. I was the problem, the only one stopping me. I didn't like it, I had to refocus. Now I'm devoted, I know where I'm going. Controlling emotions, I'm owning the moment. In order to get it, see, you gotta want it. This type of flow make a living break. Confessions over these 808. Don't no sleep on the key, better stay away. I mean, for heaven's sake. I'ma be the best, came from the endless. Playing with the games, bitch with the chest. Beating on my chest. All right, so as you guys can see, a lot of my training has changed from uh, warm up working sets into a failure set. Now I just kind of do a bunch of feeders leading up to one top set. So my working sets before used to be probably 85 to 90% of failure and then that was it. And it, I don't do that anymore. So now they're kind of all just leading up to a failure set. And um, the reason I'm doing that is recovery, my age, and I'm not taking as much stuff as I used to take before. So I have to make sure my body can recover from workout to workout. So I feel like doing three or four feeder sets into one failure set with maybe an intensity technique after is all my body needs. So for example, with dumbbells, you saw me go 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and then 140. All of those sets up to the 140 were just feeders. You know, they were five, six, seven, eight reps, nothing close to failure. And then I got into the heaviest one with 140 and I failed at six reps. So that was kind of my strength set. Now I'm working more into a little bit more pump. I want to keep around my reps around eight, maybe 10, but I'm still going to do feeders leading up to that failure set. And that's kind of how I changed my, changed my philosophy. So everything kind of leads to one final set. And then that set is what I'm going to get the most out of and then move on to the next exercise. Moving into this strive incline press. The reason I'm doing this is it's a little different than free weight in that you have three different pegs here to put the weight on. The peg in the middle is for just a regular like barbell press. It's gonna feel the same, right? The peg on the top is gonna to increase the weight at the bottom. So when I put the weight up here, it's gonna increase the pressure at the bottom of the tension at the bottom of the movement. So in the stretch position. If I put the weight on the bottom peg, it will increase the tension at the top on the lockout. I'm trying to increase the tension at the stretch position to build more mass. So I put an extra plate up here and when I, I'll, probably, I'll probably do one more set. We'll put one more plate on top to make it even harder at the bottom. So that's why I've gotten into this machine after doing dumbbells.
All right, so we're moving from, from the Strive machine to the Paramount machine. This is a Paramount rotary chest press. And what that means is you're gonna see is it's kind of like a chest, it's like a press fly. So we're gonna go out and in. It's gonna do this motion and can't use a ton of weight. I think the most I've done on it is two and a half plates, but the contract contraction is crazy. I really love these rotor mach rotary machines. We have this one and we have the lat. It's got, I got a lat pull down rotary machine over there. They just, they move in a perfect arc and the contraction is crazy. So I always like adding this into my chest workout somewhere. One more thing. The reason this is added in third. Okay, so I don't like to put this in first because it gets a kind of a, a weird stretch. And I feel like it might be too much when the muscle's not warm, right? The reason I put it third is it's not good enough. I like to put my strength movements second or first. So I did some heavy stuff with the dumbbells. I did some heavy stuff with the strive piece. But on my third, my third exercise, I like to get more pump out of it. So it'll be a mix of 10 to 12 reps to really get that muscle full of blood. So I'm mostly focused here on contraction and volume and pump more so than strength. So that's why I put this machine third. It doesn't really feel to me like a strength type of exercise. This machine's built for contraction and pump. All right guys, so you wonder why I have the contraption set up like this. So a long time ago, I started doing these reverse incline cable crossovers because cable crossovers were a hit and miss exercise for me. And I found that with no bench here, I was using too much on my body. I would like lean into it too much or I would hunch over with my shoulders or just something would, I would be rocking back and forth and I wasn't getting all the chest contraction that I possibly could. By putting the bench here, it allows me to lean into it, stay in this position, stay locked in. And the only thing moving is my shoulders, right? My elbows are fixed in this position. My chest is now against the pad. Nothing is swaying back and forth. My legs are taken out of the movement. It's literally just my shoulders swaying back and forth and my chest contracting. So that's the purpose for this. We finish the chest, finish chest off with this isolation, rep range, 10 to 12, three sets, usually good enough. Chest is polished off, burnt, ready to move on to my post-workout meal or another body part. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, cause I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again. See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch. I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize. You ain't got no soul, you lacking the spirit. You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it. I've been really happy you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again. I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them. So if I ever win again, it's nobody the minimum. I didn't have to sell my soul. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Please don't play no games with me. No it was never about the fame to me. They needed the best, so they came to me. Whoa. All right, guys, so we're moving from chest to triceps. Uh, in my split, I'm trying to hit arms twice a week because 
barns are downsized quite a bit uh, since back in the day. Uh, I don't think they're gonna get back to 23 inches, but I think I can round them out a little bit more by adding some more frequency than just the one arm day. So usually post chest, I'll do about six sets to eight sets of triceps. And post back, I'll do six to eight sets of biceps. Uh, the other thing you guys can see, so I usually start triceps with press downs because it helps my elbows get warm, even though my elbows are warm already from chest. Just like to start with press downs when I do triceps. Um, I've added these, um, you know, these aren't, these are, fat, I guess, are fat grips, but these aren't the actual brand fat grips, it's just a no-name brand, but I've added these to all my arm exercises. Actually, and shoulders too. Anytime I'm gripping a dumbbell for like lateral raises or front raises uh, or bicep curls or tricep, anything tricep or anything to do with arms, whether it's machine or not, I've been adding these. And I'm not gonna sit here and try and tell you there's some scientific reason why. A lot of people think that these things are just to get more forearm work. What I've known, and, and listen, for probably 15 years, I've ignored using this, using this contraption during my training. Cause I'm like, I don't need forearms. Who cares about forearms? What I realized recently is it's actually taken the pressure off of my forearms, off of my elbows, and actually creates more tension on my bicep, tricep, or shoulder, whichever one I'm working. So I've started adding these to all my exercises and even like you, you know, using the tricep extension, like, you know, using the straight bar for tricep press downs, just having a wider grip seems to help my elbows. Now, whether it's in my head or whether there's some scientific reasoning behind it, I don't really care. Trial and error tells me that this is working and it seems to have alleviated a lot of tension that I had on my uh, bicep tendons, tricep tendons. So I'm gonna keep doing it. So that's why they're on there. Now we're gonna get to work. I'm gonna show you I'm with it. I don't really have for you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again. I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them. So if I ever win again, it's nobody the minimum. I didn't have to sell my soul. Please don't play no games with me. It was never about the fame to me. It needed the best, so they came to me. Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Tell them, who bring the fire? Say, yeah, that's me. Who make it flip, make it bang. Ooh, yeah, that's me. Who make the party feel alive? When they ask, is that your man? Yeah, that's me. And if I'm taking a shot, I don't miss. Who knew I would be at the top like this? And no one made my goals for me. But I'm exactly who I'm supposed to be. Cause it's the path that God chose for me. So even if some doors close for me, I still won't let y'all close to me. So please step back where you're supposed to be. Put the game all on hold for me. And sit back, watch me roast to be. Uh, it's in my jeans, I'm better than I'm in. I know my flow's too sick, I got the medicine. I'm way at the top, who can take my place? I went too hard, can't feel my face. Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Tell them who bring the fire, say, yeah, that's me. Who make it flip, make it bang, ooh, yeah, that's me. Who make the party feel alive, tell them, yeah, that's me. Whoa. Yeah, ooh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's who that chillin' at the top, tell them, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, tell them, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'm chillin' at the top, ooh, yeah, that's me. Uh, all right, so you guys see there's a little difference in my training when it comes to arms and it comes to like bigger body parts. Uh, what I found is just training heavy all out the way you would train like back or chest or legs doesn't seem to work for me when it comes to arms. If I try and train too heavy with low reps, I just get more tendon pain, bicep, tricep, elbow, whatever. So I use a moderate, moderate weight get more volume. So I'm in the 10 to 15 rep range with a moderate weight instead of like a six to eight rep range with a heavy weight. It seems to help me fill out my arms more, seems to help me stay healthy, seems to help me recover better for the next workout. 
I just get a better feel overall. When I go too heavy, I feel like I'm just trying to lift the weight and I don't really get that contraction in my biceps or triceps. So, and then the second difference that you see is there's no failure set, they're consecutive sets and they're just straight sets. So they're all 10, I'm pyramiding up in weight, but they're all 10 to 15 reps somewhere in there, right? So I went from 100 to 120 to 140, 260. And, but my rep range just stayed in the 10 to 15 range, just burning out the muscle all the way through. All right, guys, one of the best tricep builders you can have is skull crushers with a free weight, lying tricep extensions, to me is the best mass builder for triceps. But if you have elbow issues, and I do, my elbows do tend to get inflamed. I found that doing them on a cable machine with the uh, straight bar, it seems to help me still get that feeling, still get the contraction in the long head of the tricep without getting a lot of elbow issues. So this is a fit, quick fix for you guys out there with elbow problems that can't seem to do it with a free weight. Um, I do also do it with, on an incline instead of flat or decline. This also seems to help my elbow for whatever reason. If I'm on a decline, I get more stretch in the long head of the tricep, which is what you want, but that stretch also tends to aggravate my elbow. So sometimes in training, you have to work around things so that it works best for you. And this seems to be what works best for me. So if you guys have the same issue, maybe you wanna try it yourself. All right, so the camera guy, Ahmad, is also training and doing his own transformation. He asked me, what's the difference if you flare your elbows out or keep your elbows tucked when doing skull crushers? The textbook version is with your elbows tucked, okay? So if you see me do, not doing a tuck, I know that's not proper, right? Your, your textbook version is elbows tucked and kind of doing this, right? The problem is when you get to my size or even if you're not big but you don't have very much flexibility, your elbows are gonna to tend to flare out for your wrists to be able to hold the bar properly. Your elbows are gonna go like this. So in that scenario, you could change the grip possibly to make it so that your hands fit properly. Or what I think is most important is that you feel the muscle working, okay? If you can feel the mind-muscle connection and you can feel that long head from here to here contracting on every rep, then I think you're okay with whatever form is comfortable for you, whether it be out or in. But yes, the textbook definition or the textbook form would be elbows tucked in. But to me, most important thing is that you can feel the muscle working. All right, guys, that's chest and triceps. And like I said, just a little bit of triceps to finish off after doing chest. So the way you think of the split is it's kind of a chest dominant workout, just pumping a little bit of blood into the triceps and then arms have their own day later in the week on Saturday, where I just train, focus, I'll do like four sets, sorry, four exercises for triceps and four exercises for biceps on that day to give them kind of more focus. Um, so me and Ahmad here behind the camera are talking about form and training with perfect form or training with sloppy form. And I wanna express something about bodybuilding because people say to me, well, why are you still doing what you're doing if you're not, you're not competing anymore? Why are you still going so hard? Why do you train so hard? Why are you dieting so hard? Why are you doing this? And it's like, you will not last in this sport, lifestyle, if you don't do it the way you love it. People say, well, you're not gonna last if you don't love it. But that's a relative term because there's a bunch of different ways to love it, right? You could be the science guy who loves being perfect. I wanna read every single book, I wanna know every single thing about every single term and every single definition and every single, every single thing I could find out. And when I train, I wanna use that perfect form from, that I learned from the textbook and I wanna be perfect in every way. You can be that guy and that could be something you love. That guy that loves to learn and be perfect. You could be the crazy freak guy like James or Ian or, or Roman 
that like doesn't like food and doesn't want to cheat and just wants to eat fucking chicken, rice, steak, and fucking oatmeal and just be shredded all year round and put on as much mass as possible and be perfect that way and love it that way. Or you can be the kind of guy who has a little bit of leeway but does it for a long time and that's me, okay? I like having a Saturday night, Saturday night off with the wife. And this is even when I was crazy at the top in my prime. I liked having off season. I would have a night or two off a week, go for dinner with the wife. I might have a drink, I might not. You know, I might have a pizza, I might have some sushi, I might have something that I enjoy during the off season and keep myself focused. Now the same thing goes in the gym. I'm not in here trying to be Mr. Textbook Encyclopedia form. I'm in here trying to put on muscle, but I'm also in here trying to have fun. Okay, so if I, have a, if I had a, tech, uh, a perfect form guy come in here and say, look, that's not the way you do it, you gotta do it this way, and you'll put on one or two millimeters of muscle more, but at the expense of all my fun, I'm like, fuck it, I'll stay the size I am. I'm good, right? I treat everything in bodybuilding that way. If it means an extra pound of muscle, but I'm sacrificing my happiness, probably not gonna do it. Because I like enjoying what I'm doing. I like training a certain way, I like eating a certain way. I like living this lifestyle my way, okay? And that's the most important thing I want you guys to get out of watching my videos, watching my podcast, watching anything, is it's, you gotta love it your way, okay? It doesn't matter if you're doing Greg Doucette's main gaining or you're you're doing Roman Fritz's fucking 7,000 calories a day, or you're doing my 90% on, 10% off kind of, kind of style. Doesn't matter what style you choose. The most important part of what we're doing is that we love doing it so we can do it for a long fucking time. That's why you see me at 43 years old, still in here training my ass off, still dieting, still doing all, because I love these things. I love doing them my way, right? Is there a better way? Maybe. But if it's gonna be at the expense of my happiness, I'm probably not gonna do it. And that's something you gotta figure out for yourself. You gotta find the way you love to do this the most. Do you love keto? Do you love high carb diets? Do you love powerlifting style training? Do you love high volume, low, low weight style training? What do you love? That's what you have to find and that's what will keep you doing this for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I guarantee you, the guy with the perfect, perfect everything that's unhappy will not last as long as you if you're not perfect but you love doing it every day. You will win that long race because you'll be happy all along and you'll keep doing it. Whereas that guy will get sick of it at some point, be like, fuck this, I hate this thing, it's making me miserable and they'll move on to something else. So that's my rant guys for today. Do what you, find what you love, do what you love, do it for a long time. Until next time guys, live hostile, thanks for watching.